Hello and welcome to the Marine Channel. My name's Jason and this is David. Now we're down here at Swanwick Marina and we're wandering around the boatyard this morning. It's a lovely day. And all of a sudden, David, you dashed off. You got all excited. You started rubbing the, uh, the hull of this boat. I haven't got a clue what it is, so you're going to educate me. You're going to tell I'm me what it is. I'm going to try and educate yeah, It's a tough yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a Nelson Weymouth 42. Um, Nelsons uh, have a, an amazing history. Um, they're not new boats by any stretch of the imagination. This boat's 1979. Uh, it's been lovingly looked after, as we'll see as we, uh, as we go over the boat. It's actually been re-engined, and again, we'll see that as we go through. Um, this boat has only had two owners since 2002. And in fact, the chap who owns this one, believe it or not, has two of them. Um, another one sitting just over there. So um, the heritage behind these boats and the history is the Thornycroft family, um, who originally started Nelson and started building them, were commissioned by um, Baron de Rothschild, who lives in, on the Exbury estate on Bewley River. He wanted a boat that he could get across to Cowes to go to the yacht squadron at 18 knots, whatever the weather. And that really was the birth of the Nelson 29, um, and the following boat was the Nelson 34, which was a really popular one and sold hundreds and hundreds. Um, they grew over the years, and the 42 here was pretty much the largest one. There is a 60, believe it or not, that was actually extended to become 60, um, based in uh, Sulcombe at the moment, but that was for sale fairly recently. Right. So this boat was designed you know, for a person, for a, a job, and then I guess other people latched onto it and went, oh, I could do with something like that. Because the weather's not great in the UK, no? No, 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 <laughs> no. I mean, once the boat was built and proven, it then became the main go-to boat for harbour masters, pilots. The Navy had a whole heap of them. Um, Dan and Dartmouth at the Naval Academy there, there's a whole fleet of them, um, which they use for training, obviously. And what, so, and what is, I mean, what's so good about this design that makes it... So it's, well, fundamentally it's a really strong boat. And as we go around it, it's built commercially almost. I mean, if you look at the rubber fendering there, you know, you don't find that on a, on a princess. Uh, that it, looks like almost you'd see on a lifeboat or a pilot boat, right? Exactly, exactly. Right, okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really heavy, solid boat. Um, the hull isn't a planing hull. It's a semi-displacement hull. And if we look at, let's walk along it, I think, okay. in fact. Um, Nicely, this one's got a, a bow thruster there, which I suspect was probably a later addition. Um, but what you will see, especially when we get to the transom, is the hull is more rounded. Right. Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, so it doesn't plane, although it's a semi-planing boat, semi-displacement, so it will come up slightly with the right power. So compare this one with what we've got next to it, this yeah. modern... So, so this, this, this um, boat is basically a, a planing boat, so it's right. a deep V hull. Okay. So it's a very simple, it's like you know, two flat sides formed into a V. Yeah. And you get varying angles of that V um, which affect its handling. Right. Now this boat, very different. Um, it, it would roll a little bit more, I guess, because of its shape. But it's got this kind of keel here. So, yeah? Yeah, so down here, yeah. you've got quite a deep keel, and that serves a couple of purposes. One, it protects the prop from any grounding. So if you, if you come too shallow, it'll, it'll hit that first rather than um, hit your props, but also it gives directional stability. Right. So as you're, as you're going along, it means the, the track doesn't wander. Right. But let's, let's go and have a look at the back here. It looks a heavy boat, right? Um, it, it will be substantially heavier than you know, the comparable length um, modern boat. But if you look at this shape here, it's totally round. And luckily, let's, let's just have a look at this boat, which conveniently is next door here. And here you can see, you know, very sharp edges. And if we look down here, we've literally got a V. Right. Hence the deep V. And if you go back to the Nelson, I mean, in the centre line there, it's, it's pretty flat. So was this kind of the first of this design, this kind of... Well, I think I, they'd had sort of similar things, but it was certainly revolutionary right, right. In, in, you know, starting out these heavy duty work boats. And, and because they were so good, they got adopted as leisure boats as well. Right. Um, and there's, you know, there's huge numbers of them around the world. But let's go and have a look aboard. I thought you might say and, that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll give you a leg up. I'll, I'll leap like that. We'll cut at this point. <laughs> and by the magic of telly, we'll appear on deck. <laughs> right, David, well, you've lured me aboard this Nelson 42. Um, tell me, what are we looking at here? So here we're on the, at the aft deck. Um, now, the aft deck is actually on top of the aft cabin, so we're actually quite high up here. Yeah. It does feel a little bit like you're sitting on top of it rather than in it, but that's just part of its charm. Um, the whole boat is, is really functional, and it's all very practical. It, 
it isn't a luxurious boat, to be perfectly frank with you, but it's just a solid, seaworthy, yeah. go-anywhere boat. So all these plastic ones will be back in the marina when this is still plugging away. <laughs> I like that idea. So um, this is the upper helm. Two helms, obviously. Um, it's not a flybridge, technically, because we are in the cockpit, but we are elevated, as I say, because we're on the, uh, the on top of the aft cabin there. So very functional um, instruments and controls. Um, as I say, this one has been re-engined. It's got some Perkins Sabre 180s in there. Um, and thoughtfully, they've put electronic, electronic controls on there. So you right. haven't got the cables. So just really easy to um, nice. use and maneuver. But all the basics are here. You've got um, your uh, log, so uh, depth and speed, um, autopilot, wheel and, and basic instruments. Oh, look at this, look at this rudder angle. I mean, that just looks like it came out of a, I don't know, a Lancaster or a Spitfire or something. It's great, it? it's isn't it? Beautiful. You know that's never going to go wrong. No, absolutely. Yeah. And that's absolutely. a big old Ray Marine there as well, actually. Yeah, it's a it? decent I know it's an size. older one, but it's, yeah, um, no, no, absolutely. it's pretty huge. It is a decent size. I'll see if I can get it off there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So it's You get the feeling that, and I think you said, this boat's had two owners in the last 20 years. Whoever's owned it has really loved it and, and sort of done the upgrades that you'd want on they a boat are. like this. And they're probably, they probably do a lot of work themselves. It yeah. is, goes with that type of owner, I guess. Yeah. Um, I should confess, I've got a blue semi-displacement boat myself, so that, <laughs> that's kind of why it appeals. I knew, I knew that's why you got kind of excited and dashed over here. You're missing your own boat, exactly, aren't you? Exactly, exactly. Quite a nice place to sit out though, isn't it? It I is. I mean, you've got so these you've, lockers you've, here. Yeah, absolutely. You've got these two lockers which double up as benches. Yeah. You've got another um, seat here which effectively gives you some headroom inside when you're going into that half cabin but also great view if you need it as well yeah. so yeah. Um, you know multi-purpose but as I say just just really practical let's have a look down the side okay bits. I'll go this way okay I'm not gonna race you <laughs> I'm, I'm always nervous when boats are on the hard because if I fall over it's not a case of getting wet <laughs> it's a case of getting broken isn't it okay but so I think, you know again it's it's sort of commercial background shows so we feel safe. We've got these yeah. really solid rails, but we've got grab rails on both sides. So if we're out in a really big sea, we're probably crouching and we're holding on like that. Yeah. So bow, a van, very practical, serviceable bow, um, all chunky stuff. You know, this is really solid. Yeah. We've got our anchor winch under there, um, some serious cleats, um, yeah. and everything is just practical. Nice non-slip deck no teak obviously it's because it's just it's all practical it just yeah. has to work and be solid and reliable and, and if you're into about. kind of you know rubbing down and maintaining you know there's there's, there's enough wood here isn't there to uh, absolutely be going on with actually this at the yeah. front is in really good condition you can see yeah with a bit of uh, a bit of time the whole boat would come up the screens here as well just kind of like you said they they look very commercial boatish don't they definitely there? definitely and i mean you've got you know, you've got your wipers here, but look at those water washers. Yeah. That's copper hose. You know, that's, that's uh, yeah, just solid, practical, reliable stuff. Yeah. Let's have a look inside. You're kind of, I'm kind of warming to it, you know. I'm. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, boats these days, it's all about internal volume, which means they're very wide and very high. This is the opposite. So this boat is purely built around sea keeping. So the downsides, I suppose, is that... The boat is very narrow, as you will see as we go through the accommodation, but it's just an amazing place to be. It's kind of like being in an old drawing room. Um, <laughs> it's, you know, it's all wood. There's plenty of um, seating up here in the saloon, so it is very sociable. Um, you've got a great view out of the windows. Um, it's, it's just a very purposeful, solid place to be. I That's love that. I love the smell in here as well. I mean that yeah. in a nice way. It, it, it smells, all, you know, the kind of wood and the carpets. It, it smells very dry, but it smells like it's kind of lived a life and, and it'll take care of you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. It's, it's built to last, you know, it's built to be solid. Um, you, you know, the, the maintenance is varnish. It's not replacing vinyl sure. linings and all that kind of stuff. So. And, and, you know, let's remind ourselves, I guess, 1979, if you look at brands like, what, Princess and Sunseeker and that, they, they were kind of making 30-foot boats. Yeah. This was a 42-foot. This must have been quite the thing this you know if you a, had this yeah, back in 79. Absolutely this was a big boat in its day and you're right Princess at the time I think when did the Princess 45 come in and uh, Mr King who owned Princess at the time said that would probably be the biggest boat he ever built he was wrong but yeah. you know this is 42 it's a similar sort of size yeah. so um, for, for its time yeah huge boat huge um, boat. And we've got a lower helm here so just talk yeah, us through so what we've got. Yeah so a lower helm here and again a very purposeful solid helm seat 
Um, and again, all the sort of basic instruments, and you know, you just know they're going to last, and you know they're going to work. You've got your basics for your tank, so fuel and water. You've got your engine um, monitors there, your engine uh, instruments. We've got the, the bow thruster, nice VHF, electronic controls again. Um, really nice compass, actually, ship's heading compass. And you've got that amazing rudder angle again, which is great. And you can see as well, the, just these little notes from the, the current owner or previous owner. Yeah. Everything's sort of labelled, and uh, you've got that Celsi bill, Lion Regis. Yeah, it's absolutely. it's been loved and it, it, it knows what it's doing, doesn't it's, it? <laughs> it's like a classic car, you know. It's 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 analog, it's basic, but I mean, look at that horn. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. is amazing. I won't press it; it'll <laughs> frighten everybody in the yard here. But um, yeah, it's it's superb. And this this boat has clearly been looked after. It's got you know we've got central heating in there. It's got a generator. The engines have been replaced, and we'll go down in the engine room in a little while and have a look around there. But. You know, it's it's it, all its systems have been cared for over the years, yeah. um, and the simplicity as well will will hopefully give in reliability as well. So over here we've got um, again another decent sized plotter, same as we've got upstairs. Um, but let's go down. Let's go and have a look down here. So this is a surprisingly generous area, isn't it? So it is, and I suppose in many ways it feels like a sailing boat down here. Yeah. Um, and again, back in the day, we we didn't have big Sunseeker Princesses, Fairlines, all that, who, who'd sort of you know really transformed the interior of boats. Um, it it they harked back to sailing boats, and you know this wouldn't be. Uh, much different to a, a similar size sailing boat. I'm impressed you. with the light as well. These windows mm. down the side here, it doesn't feel claustrophobic. This this um, seating area, this donette, yeah. you'll no, sit four or five again, comfortably. Yeah, absolutely. You? Yeah, so uh, easily four or five. And it would even be brighter. We've got a hatch up here which has got a cover over it right. at the moment, so we're, we're missing some light as well. So, yeah, I mean, a really cosy place to be. And again, if, you, if you're in a sea, if you were, happen to be going, you, you feel kind of wedged in here, you feel tucked in, so mm. you feel safe. And the galley is, is a really nice area. So we've got you know, a large sink and drainer, and we can pop those on if we need more workspace. Um, but you know, decent sized sink under here, three burner gas hob. We've got an oven down here. Yeah. Fridge over here. We've yeah. got a freestanding microwave. Again, it's, you know, look, look at these. Just really traditional. <laughs> storage well solutions. it works doesn't it i guess yeah. that's the point isn't it why change something if it doesn't absolutely doesn't need to be changed absolutely and we can still keep going forward we can keep 42 going. feet absolutely <laughs> and again we've got this sort of um mid-section heads which again very right. re reminiscent of a sailing boat where you walk through um the, the bathroom to get to the forepeak right um there is a shower, believe it or not. That, right. Flop that back and there's a grid down here and you've got a handheld shower. But, you know, decent sized sink. Yeah. Um, old fashioned manual loo there. But again, nice and bright. You've got windows both sides. And I guess this, well, yeah, this is your day heads, isn't it? So It is, absolutely. Um, at night, this would be closed off and it would become yeah. the, 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 the Ford cabin. So. Yeah. It's a double That's en suite, right. if you like. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, yes. <laughs> like Let me your come style. out there. Okay. Let me just stick the camera in there. Okay. Because here we've got a V berth, right? Which originally would have just been two singles. But what you can see, they've put on there a couple oh, of wood yeah. strips. And that V shaped cushion there. Yeah. Has got a solid base and it just sits on there so it makes up to be a huge oh, okay. double which is really cozy yeah that is yeah that's big that's yeah, actually big it is and standing headroom as well yeah well for me anyway you're taller than me yeah. but hey but again you've got a, a hatch <laughs> above there so you get some light in ventilation yeah. it's obviously there's an escape hatch as well but um, yeah and some good storage here yeah plenty of stuff in there and again under the under the berths there's, there's storage there as well fantastic but it just feels really cosy yeah. and warm. You don't get this on a lifeboat, do you? you don't, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a little bit more basic. <laughs> okay. But what, the, what this boat does have, which a lot of modern boats don't, is an aft cabin. Right, so that's the logic for having that kind of raised rear deck. So this is why we were so high up when yeah. we were up in the, on the cockpit there. Um, but it's it's full beam, so you right. get the maximum width of the boat, and it's actually a really large room. Um, plenty of room to stand around and get dressed. Two decent sized berths here. Yeah. Um, you've got a, a dressing table, mirror, lighting. Um, I mean, back in the day, this was very sophisticated. Yeah. This was very luxurious. Um, and I love the, look at these drawers. So no fancy catches, you lift them and pull them right. out. Which is great. Fantastic. Absolutely great. 
Um, I mean, I've got a 40 foot boat. <laughs> I haven't got a cabin like this on it. No. I mean, off cabin boats give you the space. Again, I've got an off cabin boat. Um, and the beauty as well is if you are on anchor or mooring, you haven't got the chain rattling around either. Right. So yeah. um, it's, it's quieter as well, which is great. Let's, let me just swap places with you. Okay. So here on this side, we've got some great hanging space and storage. Again, more there. And over here, we've got, stick the thing in there. Oh, okay. An ensuite. Yep. Which is, you know, is a bit dated, but it's, it's all very functional. Yeah. So it's effectively a wet room you've got, yeah. It's, yeah, your, absolutely. Your but it's, it's a decent size. This is all the original stuff, isn't it? All these yeah. panels are original. Absolutely. Yeah. But that shows the kind of quality, doesn't it? We're looking at something that's, you know, 40 plus years old. Yeah. And, you know, you think about um, a house, you'd probably have replaced the bathroom three or four times just because it would have started to definitely. kind of fall apart. Yeah, definitely. So, so this is good engineering. Yeah. But... yeah, absolutely. Why don't we go back up and have a look in the engine room? All right, let you go first, because I know you get terribly <laughs> excited. It's hulls and engines with David. <laughs> I'm sort of galleys and master suites kind of guy, you know. <laughs> So that's another nice touch, isn't it? If you are doing maintenance, you're yeah. inside. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I'm just thinking about fly bridges where you've got access yes. sort of out on the. You're often in the cockpit, aren't you? Yeah. If I hop down yeah. and just take the camera from you, yeah, I can sure. give you a sort of tour around. Sure, you don't want me down there. Well, <laughs> do you know what? I'll <laughs> think manage. about it. I'll think manage. About I'll it. manage. Okay, there you go. Thank you. So down here, we've got the two Perkins 180, they're Perkins Sabres. So they're Perkin engines that were worked on and distributed by Sabre, Sabre Power, over in Wimborne. It's a nice, it looks a very tidy installation. It is a tidy installation, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you've got the bearers there, all very solid and just very practical again. Now, I'm hoping that the camera will adjust to the light. Yeah, it will. So, all very functional. If I come around here, we've got the calorifier there, which is a really nice one, insulated. Got battery charger there. Here we've got the generator, HFL generator, which is what I've got. That's got a Mitsubishi engine in it. Got all your fuel filters here. Over there, I think it's Webasto, not Oberspecke. Heating. And just thinking, David, running a boat like this, Cruising speed? <clears throat> well, you know, it's it's not fast. You probably cruise at 16, 17, something like okay. that. Or it'll it'll have two speeds, probably. It'll have a, a, a faster speed and a slower speed. So you might either go at, yeah, 16, 17, or you might decide to go at 10. Right. And, you know, it'd be even more fuel econ economical. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, but the thing about this is the weather doesn't stop you. Yeah. It just keeps going. Yeah, just yeah, keeps yeah. Going. So all those planing boats trying to get to the same place as you they won't be there faster than you in a, in a you know a tortoise scene. and hare kind of scenario absolutely yeah? absolutely yeah well listen I, I was dismissive when we started off David I, I, I thought you'd gone mad <laughs> yeah, when you ran over here and went wow look at this um, but uh, I'm really genuinely impressed and I've learned a lot as well so thank you no no not at all thank I, you but I think it's a I, I just think it's a really solid practical boat it will look after you and it's a lovely, warm, cosy place to be in here. Yeah. So just a tremendous boat. We do need to say thanks to the guys at Clipper Marine for Absolutely. allowing us access to this. They've got this on at brokerage at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a, a, a lovely experience. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Something a bit different. Um, if you did enjoy it, please hit that subscribe button down there and we can let you know about anything that comes up in the future. Thanks very much. See you again. Cheerio. Bye.